Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today I'm going to conclude my in-depth look of the two-part episode, The Burnout. If you're enjoying these, please do hit like and subscribe. The initial plan for the family, because Olivia wants to try and keep the family together, feels that this is an important time for us to be together. So there's supposedly an old tent in the garage, in the barn, I mean, and uh, we pitch that, and they get cots from Reverend Fordwick, from the, or actually from the CCC camp, um, and the church has gathered clothing for us to to have to wear, and um, people have pitched in, neighbors have pitched in um, as much as they can. Uh, when it comes to that first night, of course, a storm comes, and the tent starts to leak. And I absolutely love how Mary Ellen is the only one prepared, and within this like tent where rain is dripping on all of us, she opens an umbrella. A little later, within a pile of burned rubble, Elizabeth sees her charred, burned Raggedy Ann doll. I wish they'd left that doll burned, but it, of course, came back later, so she must have got another one at some point. <laughs> but in this case, uh, her doll has been burned, and it becomes a story point also as Elizabeth shuts down um, completely for fear that uh, she'll lose more things that she loves, including her family members. Olivia and Grandma have spent the day uh, cleaning the kitchen, which had not necessarily structural damage, but um, was just really dirty and scorched and everything. So they've cleaned that up so that we can at least have, you know, breakfast together. And everybody clearly appreciates food and appreciates that we're all safe in the midst of this. Um, but Daddy does explain that they're going to have us all. They're going to farm us all out, basically, while they rebuild the, um, the house so it's safe. Um, and that that way they want to keep us safe and they want to keep us from getting sick because of, you know, it's it's cold and it's, it's weather and the tent collapsed on us the night before. And so much uh, to the dismay of Mama, that's the plan. So the plan works out that Aaron and Jim Bob go to Matthew and, and Rosemary Fordwick's house, that Jason goes to the Baldwins, Esther and Zeb go to Mrs. Brimmer's and um, have the opportunity to meet uh, Zuleika Dunbar for the first time. She is another guest at Mrs. Brimmer's. And of course, she immediately starts flirting with Grandpa. He immediately starts flirting back. Grandma, of course, is just, you know, disgusted with the whole thing, but... There you go. Mrs. Brimmer is a nice foil, at least. <laughs> and then Ben goes to Yancey's. We're not quite sure why this is when there seems like there would be better options for Ben, but there he is at Yancey's. <laughs> uh, I go to Dr. and Mrs. Vance's, which, of course, I'm just in heaven uh, being a part of all this. And there's a couple of fun moments, uh, you know, where uh, I get to show a little humor for, for Mary Ellen as she's just uh, so absorbed and so unaware of what's going on in the giddiness of being immersed in this world that she wants to become part of. And then Elizabeth goes to Ike and Cora Beth's. As we go into part two of the episode, it's really about the rebuild and about seeing the ways in which each of the children deals with their situation, some for better, some for worse, and in a way, the lessons we all learn while the house is um, is being rebuilt. Um, Erin deals with her humility and feeling that she needs to not draw attention to herself and be very humble. Jim Bob has been had been swiping hair ribbons, and Reverend Fordwick says that he must return them all and offer uh, some sort of service for each of the girls that he took. Uh, a ribbon from in repayment. And this this turns out that instead of returning, being able to return the ribbons because he did nice deeds for each of the girls, he ends up with girls just giving him hair ribbons. So it plays a little differently than expected for both the Reverend and Jim Bob. Uh, for Ben, he's, he plays hooky from school a bit, gets in trouble with mom and daddy, goes fishing, but you know promises to toe the line. Uh, Jason is just being pampered to the to the nines and and Baldwin's just door having him there and he starts he has an opportunity to play the piano have have peace and quiet all of that 
Uh, Mary Ellen, as I said, is just in heaven being in the doctor's office. She rearranges things to make him more efficient and loves answering his calls and changing his filing system. Mrs. Vance is having a really hard time with all of this and is worried about Dr. Vance, who she said doesn't like change. But it sort of is a, a foreshadowing of what she does when when Kurt comes in and Kurt rearranges everything. And then I say to Kurt that Dr. Vance liked things his way and he's like, well, you know, this is the way he likes them. So kind of fun that Mary Ellen gets tables turned on her later on. Um, and then Elizabeth is having a really hard time because uh, she's just trying to make herself not care about anything. And, and Corbeth and I don't quite know how to make that better, but you know, at least she's there and she's safe. And uh, it's going to take a little bit more than that to resolve things for Elizabeth. John finds the pipe and he feels horrible guilt that he started the fire. Grandpa finds out that uh, he did not unplug the heater. So he feels guilty about that. And the two of them talk. And in a sense, Grandpa brings John Boy to a point where, you know, Grandpa says, if it was your fault, I would forgive you. And I know if it was my fault, you would forgive me. So you need to forgive yourself. And we'll never know what it was, what the cause was, but all we can do is move forward. So John Boy has to come to that, and I think he ultimately does. The house gets rebuilt, uh, which was really a matter of them cleaning up the debris and repainting and rewiring and things like that. The house looked very similar when we were done, maybe just a touch brighter and more sparkly. Uh, you know, just fresh paint, fresh wallpaper, stuff like that. Um, and there's a point where John says he'd love to be able to just build this new house that he always said he was going to build for Olivia up on the mountain, but there isn't the time or the money to do it right now. So, you know, they, you know, it's more, again, the, that sense of getting by and, and that they may not be able to do everything they want to do, but they do the things that are most important, which is putting a roof back over the head of the entire family and bring, being able to bring the whole family back together again. Um, but I did think that uh, it was interesting because John says something about uh, when he first built the house. And I was, I don't know why, but I was under the impression that this house had been in the family prior to John and Olivia being married. So I thought it had been maybe Esther and Zeb's house or, you know, even before them that had been in the Walton Walton family. So I don't know why I thought that, but perhaps John grew up in a different house and, uh, you know, smaller house and then built this house for him and Olivia and their growing family. Don't know. If anybody has any additional information that they remember from any episodes, well, let me know. Ultimately, the whole family is once more back together under one roof and, um, and we're ready to move forward. I thought it was interesting. Earlier in the episode, there was a time when we all said good night uh, right before the before the fire happened, and we actually saw people lying in bed and saying good night. And that's the only time I remember that happening either. But at the end, we are once more back to the um, our regular good nights, and things go on. That's what I have for you for this segment of behind the scenes of the Waltons and my more in depth review of the two part episode, The Burnout. I'll be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.